Every single day this month, I want to talk about my stats like as it happens instead of like at the end of the month. So on the month, first day of the month, I made $139.71 realized profit. I had one loss on the IMTE spook where spook shakeout where um, I had a good entry, but then I saw this big wick and it scared me out. I made a video about it. So, um, something that, okay, I'll get to later. All right. So I started with AMC was like a carryover, right? So I got out of that and then that dumped all day, went to the 11s. I saw IMTE was a good short in the morning, took a little loss. And the reason why I traded LODE so much was almost like a FOMO, like Wall Street bets throughout the weekend. And all of Twitter was talking about pumping silver or making silver go to the moon or squeezing shorts on silver. And I was like, I had that in my mind. And this isn't a, excuse me, a silver play, but it's a metals and mining play. And what I liked about it was that it was a low flow with huge volume. And I kept winning on it. Um, like I made $44 because... When I tried to get executed at 343, I got executed at 292, making me like $40 instantly. And I sold right away. And, you know, these plays went to like 370. This went to 370, like in a few minutes. So that was my entry over here. Um, and by that time, I had um, run out of capital to play with, in a sense. So let me see. Yeah, I got in a TD because I think I ran out of capital on, on, um, I don't remember if my plan was to hold overnight, but I definitely wanted to see it spike. So let's look at the chart or maybe I could pull this down. I don't know. All right. Anyway, um, maybe if I minimize it. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go all the way here. Um, so this was kind of my entry on my TD position of 60 shares. I saw that it kind of pushed past this resistance area of 363. It was kind of midday and I was like, you know what, I think this can push to four because the float is low and it's pushing a lot of volume. And if we look at the one year chart, it had volume resistance of 20, no, of 230 million, where it gapped to the twos. So now 300 million, it's rotated the float a few times. And it's got out all of these bag holders as well. Looking like longer in the chart, I don't see a lot of volume resistance, but it's definitely come down a lot. So I don't know if people are just selling into any type of spike, but I was like, it, it felt like a heavy stock, even though it was a low float with volume. So it was super weird, very choppy in here, very hard to get executed over here, even a little bit over here. So I was trying to be like kind of careful with it. You know, I would take really quick profits. Um, and so I got in, I think it was yeah, right around here, um, 60 shares on my TD at 368.99. And I saw this go up to like the 380s or so before having this huge reversal. And I was like, I don't want to sell. It's probably going to push off of this $3 level and keep going. Like my conviction was too strong on it. And I was just like annoyed. I didn't want to give back any profits and a little bit of like deer in headlights, like, holy shit, it's reversing on me. Even though this seems like a great setup. Now I have to sell my position. Like this is one of my problems of buying at the highs and being a deer in headlights. So that's something that I'm aware of and I'm trying to figure out the best way to work on it. So I was like, okay. And then I re-entered somewhere around here in like the 
312 area because I saw, I was looking at this area here above this pre-market wick and I was like, okay, it seems like maybe we're having this like bounce off of this level and it was just, it just collapsed. Um, but it did hold this area, this 259. So I'm not buying dips. I'm buying spikes into strength because I don't want to miss out. This is FOMO. I don't want to miss out on like a blast back to the fours. And on top of that, Oracle was like projecting it to 529. So of course, and it never touched 529. So of course, I don't want to miss out on that either. So it's a lot of FOMO. So I was like, okay, so I'm, like, it's very important to observe what I'm doing so that I could learn from it. So I keep having this problem as a long that I buy at the tops. I do not wait patiently for dips. Like, and even here where I tried to find a dip, because I was like, okay, this has to be the bottom. It's touching the bottom. And, you know, it's just not correct. I can see shorts so well. Like with my short eyes, I'm like, okay, this is a high. I can get in here risking off of this if I wanted to. But as a long, I cannot see it. It's like it. my brain is jumbled on the long side. All I feel is FOMO. <laughs> But I know that I'm supposed to get in near VWAP. I know I'm supposed to wait for big dips. But like my brain just can't fucking do it. And I, I need to work on this. So um, I was like, you know what? That's it. I'm going to be a bag holder. <laughs> so I have like 105 shares. You know, I just want to be out of this um, because I did not play this well. Um I did not cut my losses because of the huge volume low float. My, my conviction has taken over. I'm not trading it. And on top of that, I'm kind of doing the same thing that I was doing with AMC, where I'm holding with conviction because it's in a frenzy. And so that made me a little disappointed in myself. Um, but it's also like an area I need to work on. Like, I think I need to just flip my computer upside down and like be like okay let me buy here for this double top going down or something like that but so i'm um, looking at this area a lot of consolidation here i was hoping for like an after hour spike maybe nothing i do like that this has been uptrending from the 260s to the 310s i'm expecting it to open um pre-market with some action, especially with the volume. It's the number one top percent gainer. It's in a hot sector because of Wall Street bets, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't have a catalyst, but it's got this frenzy behind it. And it was the first day of the frenzy. So um, yeah, it's this is what I have to work on. Like I'm super proud that I was able to make, you know, $137 today um, going in and out and whatever, $139, but I have a tendency to become a bag holder quickly. And if you remember what happened January, the last day of January, I lost $553 on AMC chasing some, you know, I don't even know what day was third, fourth day of the frenzy. So, this is kind of like I'm realizing my kryptonite for trading. I have to, I have to view the chart better as a long instead of like a FOMO, like freak that buys at the top. So those are my thoughts of today. Otherwise I'm like proud of, um, like the way that I played today. I had some really like good percent gains and I'm just like a little bit like, holy fucking shit, $139 today. Like, holy fucking shit. There was, there were months where I didn't make that money. So really proud of myself for that. Hoping that I can fucking hang on to it and hoping that I can just get out of LODE, um, for, for a gain. I, I don't, I don't want to have losses. That's also another problem. I mean, I, I was totally okay with it, taking it a loss on a short, but I don't want to have a loss on a long. It's a different type of 
psychological thing. Like I dig my heels into losses on longs and I always have. So I just, and I've told myself before, like, this is a bottom. So the next bottom makes sense or the next, see, this is where it's tricky. Cause I was like, okay, there's a bottom and then in the next bottom, but it wouldn't be here. It would be here. Like another bottom that's closer to this bottom would make me safer. Something like that is what I'm experimenting with, but I'm fucking chasing highs. I just get too sucked into the action and like, let me, you know, make the chart bigger to see what my brain was thinking. My brain is like, this shit is going to break out. You might as well get in here. But realistically, I'm so far away from support where if it decides to pull back, now I'm going for a fucking ride. It's really bad. So going long, I have to be in at support, in at support, because as a short, I'm getting in at resistance. It's just so fucking hard. Like my brain gets it. But when I'm actually in the game on the field, I I fucking fuck up. And I hate the fact that I only have three short trades a week. Like it's very annoying to me. I can't wait till my E-trade comes back. I can't wait to get more money into TD to get some short possibilities because my brain is just such a short seller. I can see it, you know? So this is really long winded, but anyway, that's a deeper look into my psychology on the day in this big fucking frenzy. By the way, I mean, I, I almost really messed up today. I wanted to freaking buy AMC here. I wanted to buy AMC in the 16s. Thank God none of my orders got processed because it would have been a fucking mess. Same thing with, um, GME, wherever it is just, just total crash today. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'll just stick to my little silver play or minerals play, whatever the hell this is. Um, and yeah, I will make a video tomorrow updating on what happens with this. So thank you for watching. Have a good night. See you tomorrow.